بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد السلام عليكم يا أهل بيت النبوة وموضع الرسالة ومختلف الملائكة ومهبط الواح ومعدن الرحمة وخزان العلم ومنتهى الحلم وأصول الكرام وقادة الأمم وأولياء النعام وعناصر الأبرار ودعائم الأخيار بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم والعن أعداءهم رب الشحل صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي in the name of God, the compassion of the merciful, hello dear brothers and sisters, respected brothers and sisters, viewers, welcome to this live show which is called The Shining Moons. So welcome to The Shining Moons live show. From the land of Hussein, from land of Karbala, I would like to invite all of you to be our guests here tonight. So inshallah, we're going to spend our time introducing a very great ziyara of Ahlul Bayt and we are going to have a guest inshallah in this uh, live show through which we are going to know more about Ahlul Bayt. So as we are uh, starting this show and as we are here in Karbala, we always start any live show by a humble salam to Imam Hussain alayhi salam and Abdul Fadl Abbas alayhi salam. So in this case, I would like to ask all of you to join me. First of all, saying a humble salam to Imam Hussain alayhi salam and Abdul Fadl Abbas alayhi salam first, and then we're going to have the guest and whatever continues with the show, inshallah. So join me, saying a humble salam to Imam Hussain alayhi salam and Abdul Fadl Abbas alayhi salam. السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله السلام عليك يا ابن رسول الله السلام عليك يا ابن أمير المؤمنين وابن سيد الوصيين السلام عليك ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليك يا أبا الفضل العباس السلام عليك يا ساقي العطاشة السلام عليك يا قطع الكفين يا حامل لواء الحسين ورحمة الله وبركاته Have you ever heard about the major comprehensive form of ziyara? Actually, when you go to the ziyara of Ahlul Bayt Salawatullahi wa Salamu Alayhi Majma'in in their holy shrines, you seek and you search for a ziyara, for a suitable ziyara, to recite it and to get connected to Ahlul Bayt, to get connected to that Imam or Imam Zadeh or son of Imam who you are visiting at his shrine. Inshallah, tonight and in the other nights, every Thursday, uh, we're going to discuss the major comprehensive form of ziyara, which is called Ziyarat al Jamia al Kabira, by our respected guest, Sheikh Mustafa Ahund, who is going to be connected through Skype with us in these nights. And inshallah, we are going to have a um, informative and informative uh, inf uh, conversation dialogue with him full of, full of information full of knowledge about Ahlul Bayt Salawatullahi wa Salam alayhi majma'in so I hope this live show is accepted by Almighty God and Imam of our time Ajalallah Ta'ala Farajul Sharif so let's welcome our guest Shaykh Mustafa Ahund and I would like to say salam to him from Karbala Assalamu alaikum Shaykhuna and welcome to this show actually after the sh short break that we're going to have uh, after my speech inshallah <laughs>
Okay, so once again, I would like to inform all of you, dear brothers and sisters who are watching this live uh, show right now. In this show, we're going to talk and introduce the major comprehensive form of Ziyara, which is called a Ziyara Jama'a. I'm sure that this show is going to uh, be so informative and full of information and knowledge about Ahlul Bayt Salawatullahi wa Salaamu Alayhim Ajma'in. So if you're turning in and if you're watching this show, stay tuned and we will continue the conversation with our respected guest, Sheikh Mustafa Akhund, inshallah. I don't know if the connection has been established yet or, yet or not, uh, but we will wait for the connection to be established over Skype and then we are going to have this discussion started and um, just uh, until the respected guest gets a starting and just uh, the connection is established I would like to tell you that even Imam Sadiq alayhi salam uh, says and in uh, lots of ahadith we read that ziyara of Ahlul Bayt makes the person makes the za'ir deserve the heaven or in another word, man zara al Hussein arafan bihaqihi falahu al jannah. For example, for Imam Hussein alayhi or for the other Imams as well, when you perform ziyara to a ma'soom and you go to his shrine and perform ziyara, you will be deserved by heaven, and the reward that you're going to have, it will be heaven. But there is you know, um, a kind of a special way through which you need to do the ziyara. That is the knowledge, the amount and the level of knowledge that you have uh, about that ma'soom. So the more knowledge you have, the better and the greater the reward that you're going to gain is. So alhamdulillah that the connection between the studio in Karbala and Sheikh Mustafa Akhund has been established. So I would like to say salam to Sheikh Mustafa Akhund, our respected guest. Assalamu alaikum Sheikhna and welcome to uh, the Shining Moons show. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh, brother Mustafa Khatib. Inshallah, you and your family are also doing fine. And Thank also my salam. So uh, to all the viewers of Imam Hussain TV3, uh, it's a new experience from uh, I've never had a Skype uh, live show, but inshallah, by the blessing of Allah and Ahl Bayt, salam, we can have a good show, inshallah, for the people. Inshallah, Sheikh, actually, it's uh, the main objective of this kind of shows is to increase the information and increase the knowledge of Ahlul Bayt all around the world. And as we are living in a condition in which as the coronavirus, you know, that the quarantine is, is spread all over the world and most of the countries and cities are under quarantine. So we don't stop by this situation and we try to find and figure out another way to make this happen, to make the spreading of the idea of, of Ahlul Bayt Salawatullahi wa Salaamu Alaihim happen. And this is the best way through which we can have you live in this show. And inshallah, by your speech, by your, uh, and by the information that you're going to give to the respected viewers, inshallah, the objective of this show and the Imam Hussain TV channel is going to be reached, inshallah. Shaykhna, for the, um, actually for the first uh, question, uh, as we are going to, uh, as the starting of this show, I would like to ask you that, why have you chosen this ziyara, ziyarat al-jama' al-kabira, for this topic and for these nights to speak about, please? Uh, Alhamdulillah, thank you so much again uh, for the opportunity and uh, despite all the conditions, as you mentioned, we won't stop spreading the knowledge of Qur'an and Ahl Bayt alayhum salam and inshallah it will be accepted by this ziyara, why we have chosen uh, this ziyara, ziyara jama' al-kabira uh, and interpreting it and elaborating on its phrases uh, I will answer this question with a beautiful hadith from Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. The narration is in Kitab al-Anwar, Noble al-Anwar, 
uh, and from Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Ansari narrates this hadith. It's a lengthy hadith, a narration. I've taken a segment from it uh, to answer the question that you started the program with, which is why this ziyarah? And Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Ansari and Rasulullah, and again, lengthy hadith, a segment of it says, Man amana bina amana billah. Yeah. Whoever believes in us and believes us, believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Very important to keep this in mind, that believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's through believing in Ahl Bayt can be accomplished. Without believing in Allah and Ahl Bayt and knowing them. So the belief comes after knowing, after knowledge. If we don't have knowledge about something, or how can we believe in him, or we can believe that thing? So Allah, Ahl Bayt uh, again, this hadith talks about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, and then how did he create Amir al-Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, even before Prophet Adam ala nabina wa alayhi wa alayhi salam was created. Uh, so it goes that all the way until man amana bina, amana billah. And then, وَمَنْ شَكَّ فِيْنَا شَكَّ فِي اللَّهِ Anyone who has doubt in us has doubt in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We see that we do see people within uh, our surrounding. That some people have doubt about Ahl Bayt, about their position, about their status, about what they can do, what is in their hand, and their status, especially this uh, era that we are living, this day and time uh, with this coronavirus and the shrines of Ahl Bayt salam, and should it be open, should it be closed, will Ahl Bayt salam, be able to uh, cure our people and a lot of questions are happening a lot of people I, I can say a lot of people's belief in Ahl Bayt salam, was tested yeah. to see uh, how much belief they have in Ahl Bayt, Ahl Bayt We might say, oh, definitely we believe in Ahl Bayt but what is that belief? Where does it transfer to? Would it transfer into my action, into my uh, demeanor and characteristics, or will it stay in my heart? Man amana billah, believe, we have to think of it and we have to see it. That believe it's not something that we just say in our hearts and verbally and we move on. No. The narrations of Salam that Imam says anybody who believes heart and verbally claims he is must be at the same level as us. Sheikh, I'm so sorry, I've got, action, I've got a question right have... here. I'm sorry, I've got, I've got a I've got a question right here. Uh, you know, uh, you are saying that according to the ahadith and narrations, uh, to have faith in Ahlul Bayt is equivalent to have faith in Almighty God. So, in uh, the you know, uh, in the uh, lessons of Hausa and in the lessons of Mandak and Logic, uh, when the people say something like this, it has got two kind of meaning. One of them is that. Uh, this kind of uh, believing and this kind of faith is along each other or they are parallel to each other. Which, what kind of uh, situation this is? Is believing to Ahl al-Bayt salawatullahi wa salamu alayhim is parallel to believing and having faith in Almighty God or it is along it? I hope if the question is clear, so I would be happy if you just describe it a little bit more. Very good question. Well, it is uh, is not horizontal. It is vertical. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, in order to get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to go through the means of Ahl bayt alayhim. So there is a path. It's not horizontal. Mm -hmm. It's a vertical. It's the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will say it right now. وَمَنْ أَطَعَنَا أَطَعَ Allah. Anybody who obeys us, obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sure. So, Again, and your question was beautifully uh, stated. It's not horizontal that Allah is here and they are next to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala horizontally. 
Rather, they are vertically. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the top. And again, we just want to bring it close to the attention of the viewers, respected viewers. Ahlul Bayt, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the top. And Ahlul Bayt, alayhi wa salam, the bottom. Man ata'ana ata'allah wa nahnu al-wasila tu ilallah. We are the need to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In order for us to get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to go through the channel, through the path, through the means of Ahl al-Bayt alayhim salam Wal-wusulata, wal ila ridwan Allah. If we want to achieve Allah's satisfaction, we have to go through Ahl al-Bayt alayhim salam So they are not next to, again, we will emphasize on this point, they are not next to Allah horizontally, rather vertically they are to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so answer the question was why this ziyara yeah well we want to get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everything that we do in our life is qurbatan Allah ta'ala sure. we are seeking nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we want to get closer to Allah and attain his satisfaction so in order to do that we have to go wa nahnu al wasilatu ila Allah the means the path the only way to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala satisfaction and attaining that satisfaction and the only way to get to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is via ahlul bayt so we want to get to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have to know the means to get to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they are ahlul bayt that's why we have picked ziyara jam al kabira that inshallah by us elaborating and going through each and every phrase we're not going to rush through it inshallah I'll give you uh, and us a long life it's going to take long 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 uh, years and years to come to inshallah be able to inshallah uh, uh, and we see that every segment that we read how much our knowledge of Ahlul Bayt increases. Inshallah. Shaykhna, actually, as uh, we are uh, going to enter this great idea and introducing this um, magnificent and great ziyara, and as this show, right now, this is the first episode of this show, this live show, is a kind of introductory show, and people are going to get uh, more knowledge about the uh, objective of this show. I would like to ask you another question, that uh, when, when you were talking about uh, this, topic and you said that Ahlul Bayt are the means through which one can get to Almighty and to get to Allah you said that they are the only means I'm going to ask you about this world how you say they are the only means isn't there any other mean through which one can get to Almighty? So there are lots of people who don't know Ahlul Bayt. So you want to say that they have got no way, no path to get to Almighty? And I would uh, be, uh, I would uh, uh, be happy if you introduce this so respected viewers know that why we say Ahlul Bayt salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi wa are the only way uh, through which one can get to Almighty God, please. Beautiful question. Uh, when we pray in our salah, uh, again, it needs to be emphasized and we need to remind ourselves. Salah, every day, ten times, we say, Ihdina sarat al-mustaqeem. Sure. Guide us onto the right path. So we have to come to the conclusion that the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is only one path. There are not many paths to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's only one path. And now we're going one step further uh, be before your question uh, comes to mind is that, okay, how many paths uh, there are to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Mm -hmm. Well, by this verse, we uh, claim and we argue that there's only one path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ihdina. As-sarat bi al Yeah. And as... Uh, Everybody claims that to are the only right path, according to narration from uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alayhi, that my nation, uh, the nation of Prophet Musa alayhi wa 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 and my nation 
will also uh, divide into 73 sects. One of them will attain salvation, and the other one, the other 72, will be in hellfire. Yeah. So, and this is a narration that is agreed upon by all the different school of thought within the uh, religion of Islam, all different madhahib, all different faiths within the religion of Islam. So, again, Quran says one path. Guide us into one path, the right path. And now Rasulullah said there is only one right sect, one madhab, one sect that enters, uh, will get Allah's gain of Allah's satisfaction and attain salvation. Well, we come and we look within the verses of the Holy Quran and the narrations of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa numerous times, numerous times in Quran and numerous times within the narrations of Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa you see that he mentioned that Ali Ali and his followers, Ali and his Shia. And then these are the Khulafa, these are the right path. This is the, my successor, this is my vice Jian. Follow him, Ali al Haq wal Haq wa Ali. Both the school of thought agree upon this narration that Ali is with the truth and truth is with Ali. And the rest of the hadith is beautiful at the beginning of it. And truth goes. Anywhere that Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam goes. If that truth is somewhere, and Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam comes to a truth, goes somewhere else, Ali ibn Abi Talib goes there. No, Ali ibn Abi Talib is where he's the truth, the manifestation of the truth. So if you are not sure, you have within your own sources that Allah, Rasulullah says, Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam the truth, the truth is the right path, and that one right path is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And others, well, we have Qasr and Muqassar. If they had the means to get to know Ahl Bayt or if they did not have the means to get to know Ahl Bayt sure. we will let the management to be done by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, right now, not a follower of Ahlul Bayt, maybe tomorrow he will become a follower. Maybe something happens at the end of his life that uh, he will be one of the followers of Ahlul Bayt. As we, all of our viewers, mashallah, they are well educated and well informed that Hurrat Nayazid al Riyahi until the night of Ashura, he is the enemy of Imam Hussein, he's standing in front of Imam Hussein. <laughs> Until the noon of the Unfortunately, it seems that the internet connection is not that good. Uh, so uh, we have a uh, kind of problem, unfortunately, Sheikh uh, hearing your voice clearly. So uh, I do apologize. I'm sorry. And I do apologize for all the respected viewers for uh, having this issue, but I hope the internet connection is back and we can have a better connection. So uh, right now, let's have a short break and I hope the control room, we are fixing this problem and then we'll be back once again. Let's go. 
شذرة حب در وياقوت ومرجان حب عباس املك باحساسي ما يملك مثل سليمان محيط بلا يا ساحر عظيم بكربلاء العباس دخيل اش قد احبه احبه حتى اقدر انطق بحروف سجاد العتر المحبوب يلهمني من صبر ايوب 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 Uh, our usual but anyway until inshallah we are going to reconnect to uh, Sheikh Mustafa Akhund inshallah uh, first of all I would like to thank him for his great lecture for what he said in this regard and I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, the idea you know uh, Sheikh truly and greatly said that Ahlul Bayt salawatullahi wa salamu alayhim ajma'een they are the only mean and the only way through which one can get to Almighty God. Um, let me give you an example right here. Imagine that you are starting to have a trip from point A to point B. And this distance that you're going to pass through, you can have different means, different vehicles. For example, if you get a bicycle, you're not going to be able to complete this way uh, in a specific and in a very limited time. But if you get a better car, if you get a better vehicle, then you are going to reach faster and better and safer. If just as an example, we can have this example, we can see and we can have this idea that Ahlul Bayt salawatullahi wa salamu alayhim ajma'in are the best and the best and the best mean to Almighty God because they know the path, they have all the ideas and all the teachings and all the things that the passengers, let's say, that people need through this um, path. This path is not an easy one. It's not a, a safe one. There are lots of dangers uh, and dangerous things are ambushing around this path. So you need a leader who can take you, say, from point A to point B. So I think that this example is going to give us a kind of idea and a kind of, you know, clear imagination about how we say Ahlul Bayt, salawatullahi wa salam alayhi wa are the only way to Almighty God. Shaykhna, salam alaikum once again, and I'm sorry for the issue which happened, and we are with you once again, please. Alaikum as rahmatullah. No problem, inshallah. We're all trying, inshallah, inshallah. our best, and inshallah, not from us. Inshallah. We get to the same basically. We have an. He was he used to visit but did not know how to address the Imam and he asks him when I get to any how should I reciting Kabira uh, before uh, the greatest and the fresh before leaving the shrine. Uh, I'm going to the Ziyarah. 
Unfortunately, so we still got to problem. receive the light. Uh, I don't know. Maybe the problem has not fixed yet. So we've got the internet connection, and unfortunately, this internet connection is not that good, and um, it's not satisfying the connection, unfortunately. But inshallah, we're going to fix this issue, and we are trying hard to connect, to reconnect to Sheikh Mustafa Akhund and to fix this issue, inshallah. So this issue is not going to happen in the next shows, or maybe even in this show, inshallah. So as I was telling you, respected brothers and sisters, respected viewers, this is the way through which we say that Ahlul Bayt Salawatullahi Wasallam Alayhim are the only path to Almighty God. Some people may come and say that, okay, we've got our faith, we've got our, um, you know, our inner faith, and through that we are going to be able to reach to Almighty God. I would like to argue that if you just notice and just I, I try to clarify these things using examples so maybe the examples are easier to understand if you have a manufacturer manufactured an object a special thing a special instrument and you have uh, you don't have that great idea about the instrument and you buy it and you want to use it you need to go through the, through the uh, instructions and follow the instructions and through the instruction you can have the best use of that instrument, object or whatever. If you say no, I can just think that by my own idea, my own experience that this object is going to work like this and like that. This is the power button, this is the um, electricity and you start to use this instrument maybe at the beginning you do it in a good way maybe you just go and just uh, use this instrument but if suddenly something bad happens to it if it breaks down if for example i don't know whatever if it is uh, elect uh, it, if it re uh, receives electrical uh, shock then it stops working then you are going to say oh i don't know what to do right now and you need someone to uh, fix it for you and you need to uh, pay more uh, but if you had uh, studied and read the instructions well before you start using the object using the instrument then you wouldn't have faced this problem this is exactly or let me not say that exactly this is something that happens uh, also in this way. I think that the connection is back once again. I'm so sorry Sheikh Mustafa Ahmed for uh, this technical issue and I hope inshallah this connection is better than the previous ones. Okay, we're with you once again Sheikh now. Uh, okay, Assalamu alaikum once again. Uh, I really appreciate uh, the people uh, behind the scene and uh, what they're trying to do to inshallah get this connection back. We will have, I think, uh, they decided that we're only going to have an audio. Uh, I'm not sure if the uh, viewers uh, received the last statement. And that I... Uh, yeah, sure. I would, I would appreciate it if you just repeat it once again, if you don't mind. Okay. No problem. So, we talked about uh, how did this ziyara got to us. Yeah. Uh, and from which imam. Mm -hmm. Where we have a narration from Musa ibn Abdullah Nakhai. Uh, who was one of the Shia and followers of Ahl al-Bayt and Imam al-Hajj. He uh, approached the Imam and he said that, Imam, I go to uh, shrines of uh, different Imams mm -hmm. and I don't know which ziyara I should be reciting and uh, how should I approach the Imam, which ziyara is the best. Imam Ali al-Hadi uh, uh, taught him ziyara al-Jama al-Kabira. So it reaches us from Musabna Abdullah Nakhai. Yeah. And it has been mentioned within uh, many of our uh, trustworthy resources that we have. Yeah. The greatness and immensity of this tiara, we can see it by the rituals before we start reciting this tiara. Mm -hmm. We have been uh, recommended that before we uh, go to the, any of the shrines of Ahl Bayt to perform ghusl. 
Ghost or the Ziyarah, for example, we are blessed to be in the holy city of Najaf. Yeah. Before we go to the Ziyarah of Amir Mu'minin, it is recommended for us to do Ghusl. Those who are in Karbala, those who are Qadameen and Samarra and Mashhad al Rada and the rest of the cities where the Imams of Ahl Bayt were buried, uh, to do Ghusl. So the purification of uh, body and soul uh, in order to receive the light of the knowledge and gnosis or ma'arasa of Ahl Bayt. So that shows the greatness and intensity of the Ziyar. Yeah. And after that, we uh, been recommended that uh, when we get do you have my voice brother mustafa yeah yeah I, I have your voice and i'm clearly uh, getting what you're talking about so uh, the purification is very important when one wants to go to ziyarah of one of the ahlul bayt sallallahu alaihi wasallam as my holy shrine yeah yes and then after that when we uh, we've been recommended that when we get near the shrine of uh, any of the Hibay that we are trying to uh, do ziyara of to yeah. recite 30 times Allah Akbar. So mm -hmm. say Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. Then when we get closer to the shrine, say another 30 times another third Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. Then we get very close to the shrine, to the Variyah, we say 40 times Allah Akbar. So mm. in total 100 times Allah Akbar times, yeah. before reciting the ziyara to not fall in the trap of uh, ghulu. But when we say Allahu Akbar, we'll talk about ghulu inshallah a little bit. Mm -hmm. Allahu Akbar min an Yusuf. Yeah. Allah is greater than being depicted. So we have to keep in mind that ghulu, what does ghulu mean? This world means exceeding of proper bounds. Mm -hmm. Ahl Bayt has placed a proper bounds that, okay, say about us, what we have told you to say about us. Don't oh. exceed it. Don't go beyond it. Do not add anything to it. Uh, do what we have told you. Actually, Sheikh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, between your speech, which is really great, actually, this is a statement, uh, there is, I think, a riwayah or a hadith uh, which says, This is emphasizing that not to make Ahlul Bayt, sallallahu wa sallam, wa ajma'in, exactly in the rank of Ahlul Bayt, sallallahu uh, of the rank of Almighty God, yes? Yes, very true, very true. Uh, it's good to have you as a uh, host of this show. Oh, thank you. Also very well educated and very well versed. Definitely. So we should not go above and beyond what they have told us. Uh -huh. So by Allahu Akbar, we are reiterating, mm. re-emphasizing that, knowing that, as we mentioned, their level to, um, and their status to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is vertically no, not horizontal. Yeah. They are vertically to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not horizontal. So, and they have received everything from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't have anything from their own. Mm -hmm. They have been given everything from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, this is before the Arajama al Kabira and how it reached us. Let us emphasize on the greatness of this. We have a beautiful book uh, by the name of Najm al yeah. It is from Muhaddith al-Nuri, Sheikh Hussein al-Nuri. He is the teacher of Sheikh Abbas al-Qumni. Well, we all, we all are aware of Sheikh Abbas al-Qumni and his Mufatih al-Janan, that we all have it. We have the actual copy, we have the application, Everywhere we go, we have the Mafatih al Janan, uh -huh. which he compiled together. May Allah bless his soul, Sheikh Abbas al Qummi. So, this book that we're talking about is from his teacher, Muhaddith al Nuri, uh, which is Najmul Thaqir. Yeah. In this Najmul Thaqir, we have a story from an individual. So, authenticity of this story, it relies on the author, again, okay, Muhaddith al Nuri, which is the uh, teacher of Sheikh Abbas al Qumni. Yeah. Within it, there's a story that uh, Sheikh Muhaddith al Nuri says, I heard this from Sid Ahmad al Rashti. Mm -hmm. So, from the person who this thing happened to him. 
سيد احمد الرشدي was an individual uh, pious individual that he was trying to go to Ka'ab, to Mecca yeah. perform Hajj and uh, he uh, joined he came to another city and from there he joined a caravan a group to go to what Hajj yeah. and they used to go with uh, camels and horses and donkeys well he uh, joined the group and while they were coming they were coming from Turkey uh, during the way as soon as they got to a, a place within Turkey the head of the leader of the caravan and the head of the group told them that this uh, next couple of hours is going to be very difficult mm-hmm. it's going to be dangerous and it's going to be snowy and dark yeah. so stay together so nobody will get lost he says that Ahmed Arbashti says what well, I was trying to also But it got really, really dark, and it was snowing. And people who were in front of me, they wrapped themselves with their abayas and uh, the piece of cloth, and they started going faster. I tried to reach them, but I couldn't. Mm-hmm. I was basically lost. Oh. So in the middle of the night, and uh, it is dark, and it is snowing, I was really, really scared. And he, myself, he was alone by himself. All the caravan, they passed away, and he stood alone with himself. Yes, mm-hmm. so he was kind of basically uh, alone. Yeah. And uh, he said, well, I decided that I'm going to sit in the middle of nowhere, dark, snowing. I'm going to stay here. I'll wait for uh, the morning, Salat al so I can find my path. Mm-hmm. While I was waiting, suddenly I saw a garden. It has trees, and there's an individual within this garden. I was surprised. And, and a very, very... A handsome uh, individual approached me and he told me with my mother tongue in Farsi mm-hmm. I said Ahmed, said Ahmed Rashti why are you here? I told him I'm lost thinking to myself in the middle of the desert a garden and this person is here in Turkey he speaks Farsi he knows my name but I didn't take the start to go with it to, to know who is this person oh. I told him well he told me what happened to you I told him well I lost my caravan I lost my group we were trying to go to Mecca uh, and I lost them yeah. he told me uh, perform nafila salat al mm-hmm. basically the 11 rak'ah he said well and he left I stood up and I performed 11 rak'ah and then he came back he said he told me you're still here I told him well I don't know the way he told me read Zayat Ashura yeah. he's like I didn't know Zayat Ashura top of my head and Probably he didn't have any phone or application with him. This is for uh, a couple of decades ago. Yeah. He said, okay. I started reading that Ashura. I was, I had it in my mind completely. Suddenly it was in my mind. I read that Ashura. I was still seated. He came back to me and he told me, why you haven't left? I told him, well, I don't know the way. He told me, read Jama'a. Basically, Ziyara Jama'a al that we yeah. want to That we are going discuss. to discuss about it, yeah. Yes. So... He said, I didn't know Zara Jama'a is a lengthy ziyara, but right away, as soon as he told me, the ziyara Jama'a was in my head, Masha and Allah. I start reciting it. And he came to me, he told me, I'm st- are you still here? I told him, well, I don't know the way. He told me, okay, get on the ride with me, and I'll take you. Masha. And we got, after a couple of steps, he told me, see, that's your group. I came down from the ride, then I start realizing, well, who was this person? He knew, my, he knew my name and he knew Farsi mm-hmm. and a couple of steps he got to me in this middle of the night he got me to my people that they tried to do wudu for Salat al-Subh I looked around he wasn't there finding out that this was Imam al-Mahdi Allah and Allah hastened his reappearance a couple of Allah. points within the story and then Imam before he leaving him he told him Nafile, Nafile, Nafile three times that pray Salat al-Layl pray Salat al-Layl pray Salat al-Layl, pray Salat al-Layl. And then Ashura, 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 three mm. times emphasizing on the citation of Jal Ashura. And Jama'a, 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 Jama. also emphasizing on Ziyara uh, Jama'a al-Kabira. So this shows us a couple of things, teaches us many lessons. Number one, in order for you to get to ride with the Imam, you have to go through this purification. First, mm-hmm. Salat al-Layl, uh-huh. you get purified. You go through this purification 
ruku and sujood and salat al shaf and the wit and raising your hand to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seven times doing istighfar and then 300 times saying al af al af. So you go through steps of purification and then you read Jad Ashra and then you read Jad Jama. You get the ma'arat of the Imam. Right now you can ride along. Uh, the Imam, Imam Mahdi, Ali, Allah, Ta'ala, for so it's, very nice. ask, it's showing us that there is a path even in the Ma'rafah of Ahlul Bayt. We need to go through a special path if we want to get knowledge about Ahlul Bayt. As I said, it's the first uh, Salat Al-Layl, the prayer at night, and then Ziyarat Ashura, and then Ziyarat Jama'ah. So through this path, one can get a better idea, better information and knowledge about Ahlul Bayt. Salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi majma'een. This is what I can, very, I could good get from what you said in this history. Truly, very beautiful. And starts again, starts with Salat al-Layl. Allah. Starts with Salat al-Layl. That we have numerous ahadi and many, many, many of our great, great scholars. They say anybody who wants to achieve highest level of spirituality, highest level of ma'rifah and gnosis, they should start with Salat al day. It's a very good element of purification of one is nafs while everybody else is sleeping, while everybody else is comforts in their bed and they are taking this uh, deep sleep. You wake up, you wake in the middle of the night and you communicate with your Lord, with your Creator and asking Him what you, uh, what you want. So that's the one way. And Mom awesome. tells him, if you want to find the path, Nafila, mm -hmm. Jama'a, and Ashura. Mm -hmm. Well, that is for us also. For us to find the path within the era of seditions, of Hittan of Akhir Zaman. We are living it right now. Yeah. We are living the seditions and the Fitan of the end of time, Akhir Zaman. Allah. With what we see around us. Well, this is the time that we need to hold on to the Imam of our time and sure. to increase our ma'rafah, increase our noses and knowledge of Ahl Bayt Indeed. How can we do that? Well, we have Nafala, Ashura, and Jama'ah. And inshallah, other speakers and other programs Imam Hussein TV3 can produce about the importance of Salat al and about the importance of Zab Ashura. Inshallah, right now we have Inshallah, focus Inshallah, exactly. The of Jama can be there. We really need to go through the other things, the other you know ways through which one can get closer to Ahlul Bayt. Uh, Shaykh Allah, actually, you know, honestly, I would like to say that uh, just uh, noticing about. Uh, what is happening to us these days, especially with the coronavirus and the other difficulties that we are facing, I'm exactly finding the humanity in a darkness, exactly just uh, uh, making it and, uh, you know, um, comparing our condition with the condition of the Sheikh Rashti that you just mentioned in your story. We are in the darkness right now. We don't know where the path is, but we know that there is an Imam who is going to guide us and he is going to take us and help us, but we need to reach him we need to go to him we need to start saying oh sahab al zaman we need you and we are going to come to you uh, I, I don't think that this is a good idea to sit on where we are and we say oh sahab al zaman you come to us al imam mathaluhu mathalu al kaaba uh, imam is just like kaaba people go to kaaba Kaaba never comes to the other people, so that's why we need to go to Imam. And the story that you just mentioned is very beautiful. We need to increase our knowledge. We need to increase our information about Ahlul Bayt Salawatullahi wa Salam alayhi majma'in through these paths through these means through these ways you just introduce Salat al-Layl, Ziyarat Ashura and Ziyarat Jama'ah and Alhamdulillah in every on every Thursday these nights inshallah from now on we're going to talk about Ziyarat Jama'ah and I'm sure that every sentence and every phrase of Ziyarat Jama'ah has got a tremendous information and valuable valuable idea and information about Ahlul Bayt Salawatullahi wa Salamu alayhi majma'in. Shaykhna, we have 10 minutes uh, or less to the end of, uh, we've got, I'm sorry, we've got four minutes to the end of this show. So for the final, uh, you know, uh, thing, for the final sentences, I would like you to give us a precious idea uh, more about the importance of this ziyala. So inshallah, in the next Thursday, we are going to go through the uh, sentences of this ziyala and we will know more about Ahlul Bayt. I'm sorry for speaking a lot. Uh, I'm with you.
Thank you. No, not at all. It's beautiful, uh, the point that you mentioned. So I think I will emphasize on your point again, that this is, this is the time that we are living, the era of darkness. Literally, people are desperate, in need of someone, in need of something to come and help them. Scientists are not uh, close to finding us any vaccination or any medication. Well, the darkness of physical and spiritual soul and body, it's, we are going through a very, very uh, big test. And I've seen different speakers, different scholars, all talking that, okay, let us go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is true, very true, that yeah. we have to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we have to know that the bab, the gate, mm -hmm. the door that Allah's mercy reaches us from that gate is the amount of our time, Ma Mahdi Ajrullah ta'ala ta'ala. We have to go and we have to beg and we have to knock on the door of uh, and pray for him. It's very important in this time that we uh, come and uh, uh, go to Imam al-Mahdi al-Sharif. There is a initiative, uh, it's good to talk about it also, that starting the 15th of Sha'ban to have 40 nights recitation of Ziyarat Ashura mm -hmm. and statement and 40 times saying Allahumma ajjad la wadiyik al-faraj. So starting the 15th of Sha'ban, yeah. a group of people have got together. It's not, uh, not backed by any organization or anybody, you know, a group of people. Starting the 15th of Sha'ban, the birds of Imam al-Mahdi, they want to start dedicating 40 days, reciting without, uh, without, without any uh, cut-off between us, 40 days recitation of Jahat Quran, to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the appearance of our beloved Imam because when we pray for him, he will pray for us also. Indeed. And this is the time that we really need his blessings. We need his mercy. We need his guidance. We need him to sure. take our hand. For Ahmed al Rashti, Sheikh Ahmed al Rashti, it was in the middle of the night, Sheikh Ahmed al Rashti. It was in the middle of the night mm -hmm. and it was snowing and he didn't know the path. Well, we don't know the path either. We don't know what to do, where to go. Physically and mentally and spiritually, Inshallah. everybody is challenged. Inshallah. Rich and poor, old and young, men and women, yeah. everybody is challenged. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sheikh. Everybody is lost. Yeah. I'm so sorry for cutting you, but we don't have that much time to the end of this show. No if there problem. is one sentence, I'm at your service, but if it's more, I would prefer to have it in the next show, Inshallah, if you don't mind. Inshallah. Thank you so much. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much, Shekhna. Thank you for your beautiful and great uh, conversation and uh, speech about these beautiful uh, ideas. Thank you so much. Respected brothers and sisters, respected viewers, Inshallah, uh, in the next Thursday, we're going to complete our discussion about Ziyara Jama'a. I would like to invite all of you uh, to this show so you continue tuning in this show because I'm sure you're going to get a precious idea a great idea about Ahlul Bayt salawatullahi wa salamu alayhim ajma'in and in these days that we are living in this world we really need a guider we really need an imam to guide us and to take our hand and show us the island of safety inshallah thank you everyone for tuning in have a great night and don't forget to ask almighty to hasten the reappearance of imam of our time allahumma ajjil waliyakal faraj thank you so much once again for tuning in have a great night and ya Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad Assalamu alaykum ya ahl bayt al-nubuwa wa mawdi' al-risala wa mukhtalaf al-malaika ومهبط الواح ومعدن الرحمة وخزان العلم ومنتهى الحلم 
وأصول الكرام وقادة الأمام وأولياء النعام وعناصر الأبرار ودعائم الأخيار